The student that I tutor and I um, we're playing Chinese chess nowadays because it motivates him to uh, learn English. And there's a lot that we can learn by playing chess about uh, language and about uh, each other as well. And uh, what I originally wanted to do was to have him, um, after each game, uh, do some kind of a productive activity, either um, uh, give a little short presentation about the game, uh, orally recount um, what happened, or uh, give a written account of uh, what happened during the game. And to prepare him, um, we started constructing a Chinese chess mind map. And uh, we went through the list group label technique, where first he lists all the words he can think of related to uh, Chinese chess. Then he groups them. He gives them symbols. As you can see, the triangles, the squares, the circles, and the dots, and the circles with dots in them. And then he starts labeling these groups. So you can see. He ended up with four groups here, including chess pieces, the movement of chess pieces, uh, what things we need to do when playing Chinese chess, etc. And then we actually started the, uh, the construction of the mind map. But as you can see, we actually went through uh, three drafts. And it was peculiar, and it was actually very interesting to, to kind of see uh, my, my student go through this process because you can see, you know, how he's coming up with ideas and he's just scribbling them out before he finally settles on one. So you can see that, you know, he's thinking on the spot, then he thinks it over again, then he just crosses these things out. And you can see the extent of his thinking. It just goes from the top right and it goes straight down. Seeing him have an idea, then scribble have an idea, just scribble it out, finally settling on an idea, etc. And then when we actually started constructing the mind map, where he would um, basically utilize this piece of paper, you can see that um, in the middle is Chinese chess. I actually wrote that. But then you can see that he doesn't have so many words to work with. I mean, he only has maybe 20-something words to work with. But basically, he bunches them all over here. And all of this space here is blank. And you can see that he's running so compactly, so tightly, those words, uh, they're put together in such a way that he's even crossing things out because he doesn't have enough space. You can see that he, he's drawing the box and then he puts the words in here and he can barely fit the words in here. So it kind of shows me that there's probably he, he lacks you know spatial reasoning, he has poor spatial reasoning, and you know I was talking to him about that, and indeed you know he's a good swimmer and he likes golf, and these are the kinds of sports that don't require so much spatial reasoning, uh, and he's he doesn't play basketball, he doesn't play badminton, he doesn't play football games where you know um, it's important to be aware of your surroundings. So I just thought that was pretty interesting here to see how he just puts everything together right here and then leaves everything else here blank. It's not used at all. And then finally over here, we can see that uh, the, the spacing has improved dramatically, and that's good. Um, over here, he was actually writing the words first and then drawing the boxes, whereas over here and before, he would actually draw the boxes first and then put the words in there, thereby constricting or con putting this uh, un undue constraint on himself, as you can see here. If he draws a small box, he has to write tiny letters. Um, one thing I did notice, though, is that as he was copying, uh, copying the vocabulary from here to here, he was still misspelling words and uh, using the wrong words, as you can see by this white tape over here. And I think, you know, again, this is perhaps a symptom of, of uh, it's, it's a sign that perhaps he's not very aware. He's, he's not actually reading what he's writing uh, as he goes from this page to this page.
Um, it's, it's mechanical, and not much thought goes into it. There's certainly no editing. So I, I feel like, you know, um, it, it's a challenge, and it's a, it's a good challenge, though, to, to do mind mapping. I think a lot of people think it's, it's so simple to do, but as you can see, quite clearly, it can be a challenge to map very well. It can be a challenge to, you know, spell correctly, to utilize all this space, to use the right words, to uh, write things in the correct order. I mean, you have to be aware of a lot of things. You have to put a lot of things together in order to mind map well. And so hopefully uh, he'll be able to use this mind map uh, to give a short oral presentation after our first game. And then afterwards, uh, when he gives another, uh, he gives a written account, he'll be able to perhaps utilize some of these words in his composition. So that's what I'm hoping to do with him today. Uh, mind map, play, and then produce.